Hey there, my brothers and sisters in Christ. <clears throat> I pray that you all are doing well, as always. I'm going to share something with you uh, that I was thinking of earlier. <clears throat> and I find it to be very highly important. We need to go back and understand why the Father sent the Son and not go astray from that. For I feel like in these last days, there's a lot of religious people. When I say religious, either they attend church or they do not who profess themselves to be Christian in word, but there's no power. And what is that power? The power is the Holy Spirit who dwells in us for those who have repented of their sins. And the Holy Spirit is he who is working in us to destroy sin. All right. As it says in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Okay, that's the importance of it all for the father to have sent the son. And the main focal uh, importance for us is to be saved from our sins. But we see, we clearly see in these last days, people aren't being saved from their sins. Professing Christians are not being saved from their sins, brethren. We have opposed, denied the power. But we see our righteousness as attending church. We see our righteousness as quoting a few scriptures. We see our righteousness as oh, as the uh, casting out devils. That's the extreme. But it could very well be a delusion. Because those same people are not being delivered from their sins. You can cast out devils and not be delivered from your sins. You can do wonderful works and not be delivered from your sins. You can prophesy and not be delivered from your sins. That does not mean, these things does not mean that you are a child of God. For it says, he shall deliver his people. Who's God's people? Those that are being delivered from their sins. Think about that, brethren. So we have a lot of religious folks who would justify themselves to be righteous because they attend church. They would justify themselves to be righteous because they hold Bible studies or because they can memorize verses in scriptures or because they do missionary or they have YouTube and put up videos. All that, do, all that does not mean anything in the presence of the Lord God. If you are not being saved from your sins through the power of the Holy Ghost, Jesus Christ has called us if you want to come after him. For he is the bread of life. He is the only way to the Father. He is the only way that we can get into the kingdom of heaven. If you deny yourself, for we know if we are left to ourselves, we are complete sinners, transgressors of the law, a, a mind and a people that are at enmity with the Lord God in righteousness. But he has called us, deny yourself, take up your cross, crucify that evil, crucify that transgression, crucify the, the sins. And follow in his footsteps. To follow in his footsteps is to be led by the Holy Spirit. As it says in scriptures, if we, see this is the main importance that we're missing. We're missing this. And this is why many, and I say many, many will not be able to enter the kingdom of heaven. For Jesus says, if we, I'm sorry, scripture says, if we through the spirit and this spirit is the Holy Ghost that was given unto us when we believed on Christ Jesus and repented of our sins. So there's a lot of professing beliefs that are in church, professing beliefs that hold themselves to be, hold themselves and call themselves by the name of Jesus. As far as calling themselves Christian. Have not repented. They've heard the gospel. But they've neglected the call of repentance. Therefore with the neglecting of the call of repentance. In believing in Jesus. That he can take away our sins. The Holy Spirit is not there in their lives. So for the Holy Spirit to be not there in their lives, how are these individuals who profess themselves to be Christians, how are they being delivered from their sins? If one is not being delivered from their sins, they are not the people of God. It's just like it says, if Christ be not in you, then you are none of his. If the anointed be not in you, you are none of his because it is the anointing that breaks the yokes. It is the anointing that destroys sin. It is the anointing that shatters the chains. 
without the anointing, we are sa we are slaves to sin. This is why Jesus says, many shall come to me on that day saying, Lord, these are religious folks. Whether you attend church or do not. He says, depart from me. I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. Brethren, if we belong to Christ, we should not be workers of iniquity. If the anointing abide within us, we should not be workers of iniquity. We've missed the whole importance of the reason why the son, the father sent the son into this world. And that is to destroy sin in us. If we through the spirit put the death to deeds of the body, we shall live. Let us go back to the truth. Just as it says again in scriptures. Scarcely all the righteous saved. Scarcely all the righteous saved. Why? Because of the deliverance of sin. Scarcely. It is scarce. Why? The lack of denying of self. The lack of taking one's cross and burying one's, bearing one's cross. And the lack of following through. Continuing in the faith, continuing in the walk to follow after the Holy Spirit. Sin should not have no dominion over us. For those who sin does not have dominion, though I understand we struggle at times. I'm not talking about those who are actively fighting. Okay, for the Lord sees and the Lord knows. I'm talking about those who do not fight sin whatsoever and just have a mindset that they are only Christian. But Christianity isn't in word, but as Apostle Paul said, Christianity is in power. And that power is the anointing that abideth within, that shatters sin, that delivers us from the bondage of sin. If you would really look at how those that are in heaven, the angels and the saints, how they see the people here on earth, you will really see how men and women are truly in bondage. If they are not free from sin, if they are not freely living in righteousness, they, they, then they are enslaved. Think about it. Imagine if you were in the kingdom of heaven. And you look down upon the earth and you seen the life of a professing believer. These believers should be free because Christ has set us free. Though they may struggle, I'm not talking about them that are struggling, that through the Holy Spirit they're putting to death the deeds of the sin. They're walking after the Spirit. As Jesus says, they heard the word, they received the word, they keep it, and with patience they bear fruit. I'm not talking about those, but I'm talking about those that are believers in name. But when it comes to the things of this world, they're bound to sin. Workers of iniquity. I just thought I'd share that with y'all, brethren. Let's get back to the importance. The people of God are truly those who the Holy Spirit is working in them. And is putting to death sin. For as Christ is pure, we ourselves desire to be pure as well. Hunger and thirst for righteousness, for he is righteous. Just as the disciples said unto Christ, how many will be saved? He says, strive. Strive your hardest. Strive your hardest to enter. For many, I tell you, will try, but they won't be able to. Why? People have missed the importance in the faith. And that is, be delivered from your sins. Fight sin through the Holy Spirit. 
Don't beat around the bush and try to uh, fulfill religious deeds or works. Let the main importance be, let me be delivered from my sins. Let our run not be in vain. Let not the prophesying or the casting out devils in our works be in vain. Where, we're, where Jesus then says, depart from me. All that would have been in vain. Let our main mind set and focus be on looking within ourselves wholeheartedly. Write down the things in your life that you know that may not be pleasing to the Lord. Pray about it. And take action. If we, again, through the Spirit, we can do this. Put to death the deeds of the body. We shall live. And it is possible. We need to want it. And God will help us to break it. We wait for the hope of righteousness through the Spirit. We, through the Spirit, we wait for the hope of righteousness, which is by faith. And as we're walking in the spirit, the spirit is destroying sins out of our lives. We're being made, we're being shaped and molded to the image of Jesus Christ. And we don't even know it. Y'all take care, brethren.